So we want to start off creating an app. You can create an app from whatever data that Power Apps can connect with. And that could be a SharePoint list, an Excel spreadsheet. We're going to start with an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so I'm going to click blank app. I'm going to click create. I'm going to use a phone format and I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to call, just so I can remember it easily, it's the June 23rd demo. I'll call it, that's where I'll give it the name. All right. And now if you have a way to either on your phone, you can follow the instructions. What I'm going to do is the manual instructions, not the automatic ones. Because once you understand how to, how the screens are created, you can make adjustments from templates that you can find that you might like to modify for your own use. Okay. So we need to select a data source and I'm going to go over here and click on data. I'm going to click on add data and I'm going to search for OneDrive because OneDrive for business, because that's where the data is. So I'm clicking on it. Great. That's what I want. It's this table inside the, the spreadsheet and I'm going to make a connection to it. So I'm in the part that's called building screen one. All right. So I'm going to go back to the tree view here and on the, on the right. Let's see, follow the instructions here. Data source, choose a table, click connect on the right panel. Okay. Seems okay. Connect. How come I'm not connecting here? Insert an item. How come it's not connected? I'm having some difficulty here. This should just automatically. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm going to insert. I feel like I forgot something here on the right panel. Okay. My bad. Okay. I need to insert a blank vertical gallery. So I'm going to see if I could just get that in here. So I'm looking for the vertical gallery and go home, insert input. I think I'm going to start over because something isn't, it's not following the instructions that I started with. So I'm going to remove it. Okay. And I'm just going to go back. Let's see. I'll, all right. So I'm right here, save and start over. So I guess it doesn't matter how many times you practice. There's still some, something that can happen a little bit differently than what you expect. Okay. So what I'm looking for here is build screen one. So I'm clicking on insert and. I am, I am just baffled as to what is not, let's see, I'm just going to completely start over then. Let's try it again. Leave that. All right. So I'm here and I'm going into power apps, open on a new tab and okay. A blank app. Yep. Create. Okay. Phone. Okay. I'll call it June 23rd, day two, create. All right. Phone create, save the app. I'm going to skip that part and I'm going to follow as closely as I can the steps that I outlined, which when I followed them to practice were really good. I'm going to close it. I should have it. If I go to all apps, sometimes there's a short delay again sorry about this i'm a little puzzled as to all apps nope that's not what i want go back here okay and in the meantime a couple of other people joined us so i think i'm gonna have to start it again i haven't had this problem before and i'm a little bit confused as to what so this is a take three while you're practicing, Jerome, can we yeah. do a quick introduction? Sure. If you want to go on the chat or verbal. Okay. I'm just yeah. putting the screen on briefly so you can see our morning chaos. It is 1138 in Connecticut. 
and hello from Valerie and teens Cora and Steven in different parts oh, of the house. Hi. Yeah. Or okay. Steve so, it, right? yeah, I, I think I'm, I think I'm okay to go, Valerie. Thank you for right. helping me out. I apparently did not have the screen wide enough and I wasn't seeing some of the controls up here. Okay, I'm back to the build screen one where the first instruction is insert a blank gallery. So what I wasn't seeing before was this gallery. And as you make it, as you change your screen size, that input option disappears. So there's a handful of different ways to do things. So I'll eventually learn where to find the gallery in another way but a lesson learned there, depending on how wide you have your screen set up, you may or may not see the gallery. So what I'm doing here is I'm inserting a blank vertical gallery is like a container. And then I'm going to select a data source. Okay. I need to connect to data. So I'm clicking connect to data, add data select a data source that could be a database, a spreadsheet, a SharePoint list. It could be Dataverse or a whole host of other connectors. So I'm going to start off by looking in OneDrive for Business. I'm going to connect to OneDrive for Business and I found the spreadsheet, which has a table, which is the data that I want to use for the, for this demo. And then I'm going over here to data source and I'm going to select the table. Okay. And then I'm going back into the center area. I'm going to make this a little bit wider. And the next part is to select a layout. And now I want to change that layout to title subtitle in body. And now you can see some of the data is coming in and Valerie, you'll see your name in there and my name and some other people's names. Okay. And so I'm going back to band and select the tree view. I'm working with gallery one. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a border around here. So these instructions hopefully guide you to locating where some of this stuff is when you're doing it the very first time, it seems a little bewildering, but eventually it becomes second nature. So I'm going to make a width of two in there and see, and it did, it put a boundary around here. Okay. And so I'm going to select gallery again. And I'm going to edit the fields and instruction seven recommends changing the title to location. So these are all personal preference. The subtitle one is co-producer and body one is going to be the project because these are the things that I want to be visible on the browse screen. Okay. And I'm just going to click out of there. And now I want to reposition them a little bit. So I'm going to add some titles, some search options and some headings and see how that works out. Whoops. Sorry about that. I, I guess you, you can't see that. All right. So on the, I'm going to insert a label. So I'm going over here to insert label and it I want this to be up at the top. Okay. I'm going over to the right panel and I'm removing the text. I just want some background over here, a background color, and I'm going to put some other things on it. So I'm going to make it a little bit wider in here. And next, what I'm going to do is I want to fill that with a light color. Again, it's your choice. I want to show you what some of your options are. Okay. So I'm putting that in and then I'm going to insert a, another label and I'm just moving my instructions over here so I could see them a little better there. I've got them on the side here and oops, 
move them over a little bit. Okay. Where did my screen go? Okay. Here we go. We're back. All right. So I'm going to move the chat off here and I'm going to, if something is, if someone's putting something in for that either Ken or Valerie can alert me to, or else I need a third eye to, to watch everything. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is insert a label and I'm going to call it the browse screen. All right. So similarly, I'm inserting another label. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller and I'm going to put it in the middle. I'm going to change the text to browse. And just to save time, I'm not going to write out everything that I suggested in the instructions. Okay. So we have browse there. And then I'm going to in, insert a text input for the search area. So a text input. Okay. And I put this below it, make it a little bit wider over here, sort of just like that. Okay. And I'm going to remove text input and in the hint text, I'm going to put search. Okay. And so that, that puts it there and you can make it lighter, darker, center it and so forth. Okay. And now I'm going to put in another label below that to put a little bit of guidance for what he in the items below. All right. I'm also going to give that a fill color, a different one. Okay. And I'm going to call this one, I'm going to put the labels of what we're looking at, the column labels or the fields, it's location and co-producer. And so I'm going to go up here, location and co-producer. And below that is the specific project name. All right. And I want to center it, click the center here, and I want to make it bold or semi-bold, whatever you like, or underscore. And then on this one, on these two, I also want to put a border. And so you could make your border thick. I'll make this one a little bit thicker, or you could make it a thin border. And you can also change the color of the border. I'm just going to make that a thin one. Okay. All right. Now, and then the other, some of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to add an icon here, a search icon to give us the you know, visual clue that this is for search. So I'm going to put that just adjust, and you can adjust these. You can make them smaller. You can move them around with your mouse. You can move them around with controls over here with sizing and placement and so forth. Okay. Now what I want to do is I would like to adjust what's in the display here. And so I'm going to click in here. I'm going to make it, a, I want to have about 10 items to display. So I'm going to reposition the layout here and narrow that a little bit. And I'm going to move this one over so that they're both about on the same level. Okay. And I need to make this one just a tiny bit taller there. Okay. And maybe nudge it up a tiny bit. And I can do that with my arrow keys, I think. Okay. All right. So that's about what I want. And just going to make this one a little bit lower. And now I can move the whole box up. And now I think I have just about, now if I select the gallery, I want to move the entire gallery up to fill the screen. And that's what I want. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10, 11. If I work with the spacing, I can get 10 or 11, or maybe even more, depending on how I want them to be laid out. So you see by changing the position of this top one, it serves as the model for the other ones. I'm just going to put that down a tiny bit. Okay. So I'm going to leave it about like that. I want to add two other icons, a reload and an add 
new item icon. So I'm going to go up to the icons here. And these are literally just icons. They don't do anything until you give them a formula or to control them in some way. Okay. And maybe I'll move it over just a little bit uh, over here. Okay. And I also want to add a new item icon. And we are going to add in the formula or instruction for what that does a little bit later. Okay, so I'm just checking on the chat, seeing if everybody's good with that. But basically what we've done now is we've created the first screen. Okay, actually, I want to do one more thing. I'm going to add the search formula. Okay, so we select gallery, made the adjustments. Okay, and I'm going to skip over how to highlight a selected item. I'll maybe come back to that. I want to add the search formula. So this is what PowerFX is about in the training that some of us have been taking with Rory Neary's course. This is the formula bar. This is where a lot of the power in Power Apps comes from. So here's where we're going to use it in a big way. So on the left panel over here in the tree view, I select gallery one, and then I see items up here in the properties list. In the formula bar, I see YTB projects. We are going to make a change. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to copy the instruction line in the Microsoft Word document and I'm going to paste it in here. And what I want you to notice is what happens in the display. I broke it. Now I'm going to paste this in. And now you'll see what it did is it sorted alphabetically by location. Okay. And if I go into play or preview the app, if I type in Connecticut, or the beginning letters of Connecticut, it filters down to show me those items related to the projects going on in Connecticut. So that's, that's one of the very powerful things that I'm just going to save this here. I believe it's saving automatically, but don't want to take any chances here. And now we'll be able to go on to screen two. All right. So starting screen two, I go to new screen and I add a blank screen. And then I locate the forms tab in insert. And I, the type of screen that I want is a display screen. Okay. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit and in the right panel, let's see, I'm following the instructions here. Form viewer one right here, data source, the data source that I'm working with is the one that we have been working with. I select the fields that I want to display. So for the purpose of this demo, I found it useful to select the fields in a particular order because that's how they will be placed. And if you want to reposition them after you place them, if you just want to click down all of them, you can do that and then you can reposition them. But I'm going to select them in this order according to the instructions that I put together or the step-by-step -step instructions. And I want notes to be at the bottom. Okay, so I do that and all right. And now I'm over here. I'm going to, I'm down on screen two, but now we see that there's no, there's nothing showing in here. There's no information. All right. So we want to connect to the, uh, to the data. So on the properties or properties list in the top left, if you are able to refer to the instructions, we want to select item. And in the formula bar, we enter gallery one 
as selected and that populates our view details form. All right. So that's exactly what we wanted. Now we want, let's see, we'll put a border around here and I'll call it three. Uh, let's see if I could change the color. Oh, I don't want to do that. No, that's not the border. I want to change the border color. Eh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So I got a red border. That's pretty nice. Now I want to put a title up here. Okay. So you could follow along with the instructions. I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut. You can go back to screen one and I'm going to copy what's on screen one. So I'm holding down the control key and let's see, did I get everything? Let me start over. I mean, I want the big one and then I want these, oops. I want to, I want to select everything here. All right. Let's see how that goes. A little bit of practice. Maybe I'll get it. Okay. And then I'm here on screen two and I'm going to paste it. Okay. So not too bad. I didn't get absolutely everything, but in the browse, I'm just going to change that. This is my view details, or you can call it whatever you want. I know in the instructions, I just suggested a little bit different. Okay. And on the, uh, let's see, I'm going to move everything upward. And if I select everything, it'll all move up. I didn't have everything selected. So I'm moving them up individually and I'm using my arrow keys. Okay. And I'm going to push that up. And one of the other icons we want to add is the bath icon. And let's see, where is that? So you can use an X, you can use a left arrow. I'm going to use this one that says back. And then I'm using my arrow keys to adjust it. And the back is pretty easy to get the formula for. You say, when you select it, what do you want to happen? I want to go back. So it's back and I close out. So that's pretty good. And we'll program the add new item button because once we have our third screen set up. So I'm checking the options here. I've adjusted them and you can also change the formatting here as you like but I'm going to move on to the next screen. Okay. And one thing I'm going to change down here is on the notes here, I think there's a way to make this T line. If I've got the line wrap on, so that's pretty good. So maybe it's working kind of the way I would want to, I'm just going to give it a little more. I can give it a little more space. Maybe not. I have to, first of all, make that one bigger. Okay. And then the interior one, I should be able to make bigger. Okay. So that's pretty good. All right. So I want to move over to the third screen, insert a new screen and it's going to be blank. Okay. And I'm going to collapse my other screens here. So we have screen three. And then I want to add a form to it. It's going to be the edit form. All right. So here it is. And then on the right panel, let's see, form one, I'm at form one, right panel. And I select YTB projects. Okay. A panel opens, and then I'm going to edit fields. I'm going to add the fields. And similar to before, I'm going to click on project, co-producer, location, com, coordinators, team, and notes. I'm going to add them. And similar to before, I go over to the properties list. I select item. Hopefully I can, whoops. Let me go over here, make sure I have the form selected and I should see item in here or else I could just start typing it and I enter gallery one dot selected. All right. And hopefully good. It brings in. So I want to select the whole form. I want to put a border around it and I'm going to resize it. 
and I want to bring in a, like a header or a border area title, and I'm going to paste that in. And I also want to put in some description for it. And then we're pretty close to having a rough cut copy of our app. All right. And so we want to, let's see, select the form, go up. We want to also put a back icon so I could copy that. And I know it's, we're at 1201. If I think I'll be able to bring this into the finish within just a couple of minutes. If you have to leave, I understand that you'll get a copy of the recording. And then we want to, we want to put in an icon to confirm and submit a new item when we add it. So I'm going to refer to the instructions on what that, what that is, and it's called submit form one and then go back copy on select submit form one and go back and then do one other thing when it's successful we let me see let me click the form when the form is successfully updated we want the form to return back to the browse screen. So we're going to put a back and put that in there. Okay. And this, I'm, this is the one that I want to reposition so that we can see it a little better and click here, pull it down a little bit. This is the one where we want it to be multi-line. See, it says mode single line. We want to make that multi-line. There we go. Okay. And so I think we're just about there. We have the control set. Now what we need to do is connect the add new item. And so this is the very last part, three more steps. We want to navigate and create a new form that we can enter when we click the plus icon. So on select, we want it to actually perform a function and that's the function we want it to perform. Oops. You don't have to click tabs in there. Sometimes I do that. And then on when we want to view an item, okay, we want to navigate to screen two to view it. So we copy that instruction and on select, we paste that in. Okay. And on the screen two, is that where I am? Let's see. On screen two, we want to add an edit icon. I forgot that one. So let's add that one in edit, put in that pencil. Okay. And actually on the view details, we don't want to add one. We want to edit it. That's what we want to do. Okay. And for that edit icon, it's going to take us into screen three and edit that form. Okay. So then we put that. So these are the power effects uh, formulas. And now I think we are set. And let's save it. We'll publish it if we want to share it with people in our organization. Okay. And now let's test it. So let's go back to screen one and see how we did. Now I could see that I'm chopping a name here. So I want to make a tiny adjustment on the layout here. So let's see, I'm in the gallery. I'm just going to click, let's see if I can. Oops. Yeah. I just want to make this a tiny bit bigger, just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to move it down. And then this one, I should be able to enlarge a little bit. Oops. Just 
there we go. And now I could see things a little better and you could spend more time on the adjustments there. Okay. So I'm going to save it, publish, publish, and then let's test it and see if I got all the steps. Hopefully this won't take too long here to the publishing and save. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I see some questions there that I'll help out with afterwards. So let's do a practice. So we did the search. If I type in Uganda, I see Uganda. So that's good. That part's working. If I click on a refresh, there's really not a lot of data added that to refresh. Let's see if I can add a new project. So a new project and it's in, where do we want this one to be? I'm going to say it's in Alaska. All right. And we're going to make something there and we're going to send Valerie. Cora and Steve to Alaska and the NJ team is going to be their backup and we'll say, let us know what you need when you get there. All right. And let's see if it'll save it for me. Come on. Yay. It saved it. And there it is. Alaska new project. I want to look at it. There it is. And okay, so I'll say, we'll send gluten free pizza. Okay, hope you like gluten free pizza. <laughs> Air section for private rooms for parents. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. We did it. What? Thank you for staying on. I know we had a little bit of a bumpy start there, and that's uh, m my blind spot on what happens in the to those tabs when your screen is in a different position but i think i got it now so the closing summary sentence or two is that those of us who are working with community organizations nonprofits businesses schools we have ideas for ways that we can use technology and benefit from having apps, maybe an app that is a collection of resources, or maybe an app that has ideas that we picked up from training or an app that collects web links or something that reminds us who's on the team or not reminds us, but if we're in a community organization that has more than a handful of people, we could use it to include member names, contact information, notes, skills, and strengths of each person. This also, the sky's the limit. Once we have a little bit of confidence with creating the three screen apps, we can expand it. We can add charts. We can put video information in, we could connect it to Power BI. We could show the charts inside here as well. We can do calculation and I'd be happy to help anyone get to the file if they don't, if they have some problems locating it. But does anyone have a question on whether they see a value or some use or purpose for working with this tool, Microsoft Power Apps, in their community work, in their family. Ken, if you're still there, I don't know who's, yeah, Ken, if you're still on the, let me check in with who's still with us. So would someone be willing, either Valerie, Robert, Ken, or Akisha, any thoughts on what you could imagine using this tool to do? Anybody? Steven, Cora, I know you're working on some, some resources. This is for my gold award. I think we actually met about that. Yeah. Can you it's... explain what you're doing with the course? And I'm making the... an app for resources for teams with autism, because I can't really find a lot of good resources. They're mostly for like kids and like huh? parents of kids, not really kids themselves. Yeah, this app that we have right here, it could be easily modified. Like I could share the app to you. You can make a copy of it and you can modify it to like where the, where I'm using location. That could be the 
either it literally could be the location of a resource, or you could make a simple spreadsheet where you indicate the name of the resource, a short description, the phone number, the website, the specialty or something like that, or whatever you think people would find useful. And we could create a, an app to, that would, that could be used with adding and reviewing that information. Yeah. What do you think, Ken, any, if, are you still with us? Oh yeah. I raised my hand and everything. Oh gosh. Yeah. I just saw that. I'm yeah. trying my hardest to use technology to its fullest. That was a yeah. great demonstration. And for someone who is a little more seasoned, getting to catch up on the app. So Cora sharing what she's developing is incredible. And I'm sure Robert, Stephen, and everyone else on this call developing things. And I accessing or reaching out to people, I see apps the most useful. When you reach out to them, it gathers data, but it also provides resources. So if someone checks off using the scans that you developed, white TV scans, and they're feeling not so good today, and they wanted to reach out to someone, clicking a resource like the second floor helpline that we have in New Jersey, where they could talk to someone. So the possibilities are endless. I wish I had an apple for the teacher, because usually we provide a, <laughs> um, this was incredible. Wow. And, well, thanks. Uh, and my um, hope is that Opika and the work that I could do to help with the people collecting the, the data in any way that I possibly can, because we have all this data, we have the outreach, we can use the data in real time. I, I'm just blown away. I want Thank to, you. yeah, you're welcome, Ken. Thank you for joining. And I use myself as my own learning aid or something. And, and what I want to say is that if I can do this, anybody can do it. Cause you saw how I fumbled around in the beginning. I'm not a world expert at this, but I can figure things out. I know who to ask for help. There's a lot of training. And I gave you a demonstration of how, by following these instructions, now it took me several hours of putting the instructions together, trial and error going through, but my motivation was that I felt that the barrier to entry with something like power apps is that with all the trainings that are out there, there are not a lot that literally break it down step-by-step. Step. So I'm just going to close out by going back to, let's see the, yeah, here it is. These are the instructions. And so what I'll leave you with is the, this 10 steps, which I have it memorized here, and I'm going to show you how you, you can use power apps as a, to create an automatic app that you can certainly use, but generally you want to modify it. So that's why going through the step-by-step -step of how it's actually created is useful. So suppose I'm back and here's, there was just some time delay, but you see those other attempts did show up in here. It takes a couple minutes. Okay. So I'm going to go into create an app. I'm going to create an app from Excel. Now you'll notice how this is completely different from what I just went through. That Power Apps is going to automatically generate the app. It's going to look a tiny bit different. Okay. And I want to, let's say, I want to get my data and let's see, where is my data in here? Uh, my connection. Oh, I guess my connection is my account. That's right. Okay. And so I'm selecting it here. I'm connecting to it. Oh, I thank you, Stephen. I see your comment in there about homework and quizzes and schools. So what's going on right now is that Power Apps created the app. Okay. Now it might be a little bit rough around the edges, but we can open things, we can edit them, we can go back and you, you see it's organized in a slightly different way. I'm going to type in Valerie. Okay. And what it's showing me because the search is different. So this is what I want to get better at. 
It's showing me all of the, so Valerie's involved with uh, quite a few of the things in YTB. And so the search is working differently. It's doing a search across more than one column. And so I want to know how does it do that? All right. So what I could do is I could click on browse gallery and I could look up here and then I can practice with this to use this type of search G. And this is where take, over time you learn a bit by bit of the different expressions and functions in the power FX language that can be used and applied to have your app do different things. And Steven just wrote in, yeah, collecting baseline data. And we're going to, I'm going to be talking with uh, Steven uh, next week about a healthcare app that we're curious about and an app for farmers. Yeah. So you can create, you can use power apps to create an app automatically from Excel or from SharePoint or from Dataverse, or, and you could also learn how to build it from scratch from a, just a blank slate, which is help as you go along to understand how to make modifications and changes. I'm going to close out the meeting. I thank you for those of you who are able to stay a little bit longer. I appreciate your patience with me being on the learning curve with trying new things on these sessions and to learn is to teach. So I hope you liked it. I hope you'll join us again in the future for something. And you all know my email. So if you have a question and you, it didn't work out for you to connect with the spreadsheet data, just send me a, uh, you know, WhatsApp, text message, email, and we'll make sure you can get to it. So thank you, everyone. You all have a good evening in East Africa, where it's seven hours later, and we're going into our early afternoon here on the East Coast. So thank you, Akisha. Thank you, Cora, Juliet, Ken. Thank you, Robert, Stephen, and Valerie. So we're going to do the countdown. Can I have some YTB people and anybody who wants to turn up the volume?